So all that's left to do is to uh, <coughs> cut the, uh, the groove or the slide in this part for the uh, anti-rotation pin to ride in. So let's just uh, set up in the vise here. Uh, be careful about tightening it down because we, can, we don't want to put flats on the sides of our thread. sure it's down tight against the parallel. Okay. Now we need to uh, center up the spindle on the part. Let's do that with the edge finder. Zero out our Y axis on one side, went over on the other side, zero that out. Divide by two, that'll put us right on center. And then, uh, let's see, we'll pick up, look at the uh, drawing, I don't know if you can see it. The slot is dimensioned from the uh, from the threaded end, so we'll pick that up with the edge finder. Just touch and move over half the diameter of the uh, edge finder. That centers us up there. And I need to put the end mill in. The slide is an eighth inch wide, so we'll use a 3 seconds end mill. Cut it. Can't use an eighth inch end mill because that would end up making the slot too big. I always got to use a size under. <clears throat> okay, I think what I'm going to do, now that I've picked up the end of the part, I'll move in the 2.69 inches, which is the end of the slot, and I'll zero my read out there, out there so I don't have to uh, worry about going too far. So 2.69. Right there, we'll zero my x-axis out. That's the end of the slot. Now, let's see here. We need to go, know how deep to go for this slot. Actually, let's, let's pick up the top of the part first. Let's run it down, run the uh, thimble or the run the quill down against the uh, stop. Bring the table up till the end mill touches. Right there. Zero out my dial on the X, on the Z axis. Now how, do, how deep do we need to go? Let's look at the print here. Okay, it's uh, the bottom of the slide is 94 thousandths from the center of the part. So we have to take uh, take 94 thousandths from half the diameter. Let's see, 0.438 divided by 2, uh, 0.094 minus gives us 125 thousandths. That's the depth of the slot. All right, so we know we have to go an eighth inch deep. Got our 330 seconds end mill in. We'll just clear out most of the stock. We'll probably go about uh, maybe 30 or 40,000 40, steep at a time with an end mill like this. We're going to have to crank the, the speed up. Um, this is 
a small end mill like this it's deceiving. Uh, we use the same formula as we use for turning or anything else, four times the cutting speed divided by the diameter. Cutting speed of this uh, material is 100, so four times that's 400. Divided by the diameter, which is 94 thousandths, equals 4,255 RPM, okay? That's all the way up for this machine. Okay, so... Crank it down 30 thousandths. People run a small end mill like this too small, and then they, or too slow, then they wonder why it breaks. It breaks because the chip load gets too high on the end mill because you're spinning it too slowly. That's why I like to set my dial or my uh, readout to zero at the end of the slot because it's easy to tell where to stop when you come back, okay? It's 100,000 steep. One more pass and we'll take another 20 thousandths off and then we'll mill it rough out the rough out the width. Right now it's just 337 drive. We have to go a 64th each direction to get out to the eighth inch. Alright, here's 120 thousandths. That brings us within five thousandths of the depth. out of the way so you can see what's going on. Alright, let's figure out how how much wider we need to make the slot. 0.125 and 126. This is the width. 94 is the end mill. Uh, it's 16 thousandths each direction. Yeah, I'm just going to go 15 each direction and then we'll, we'll check it. There's 15. Fifteen thousand scored the camera, so let's, let's climb milling. On the front edge of the slot. I'm milling with a small end mill like this because it doesn't create as many burrs. It would be a nightmare to deburr this thing anyway. Unless I can do it with a wire wheel. Let's try that. Alright, now here's 15 thousandths back. The back side of the slot.
and blow this off so you can see what's going on. Like a slot. Okay. Um, next thing we need is a uh, a gauge block to tell how when we're to to the right width. Because the tolerance on this is 126 plus three minus nothing. So I'm going to go grab a gauge block uh, about 126, and as soon as it goes in the groove, we're good to go. So let me go grab a gauge block. I'll be right back. Okay. Actually, I grabbed two gauge blocks. I grabbed a 126, which is the small end of the tolerance, and I grabbed a 129, which is the big big end. A large end, so we can use this as a go no go gauge. Uh, the 126 needs to go into the slot, and the 129 can't go in for it to be correct. So, right now, I can see the 126 does not go in the slot. So, let me take another thousandth off each side. I also, go, I'll go down to the full depth now, too 125. Set 16 thousandths to the front. We did 15 last time. There's 16. Now 16 to the back side. If our 126 gauge block will go in now. Nope, still won't. Okay, I'll go another thousandth. Another thousandth each way. Alright, 17 thousandths to the front. There we go. 126 block will go in, so we're big enough, and the 129 block won't go in, so we're not too big. Uh, this part's done. All I gotta do is uh, just hit it real quick with the wire wheel, and we'll see if it see if it fits. Okay, we got lucky. The wire wheel cleaned up the, uh, the groove real nice. Took all the burrs off. So here's our finished part, and. It does go in the the body. There's still a little bit of burr on it yet, but we'll get those cleaned off and uh, should be good to go. So next next part in line, we'll probably make the, the clamping block that goes on the bottom, and then after that, we have one more part to make the the thimble, and that'll complete this project. So uh, I'll see you for the next part.